Doncaster's a rough place, full of poverty and that, crime, so got into bits and bobs of trouble growing up on the way. Just growing up seeing crazy shit, dad beating my mum up and that, and uh, all that carry on. They parted, turned me into a bit of a, uh, a crazy tearaway, do you know what I mean? I went upstairs and I used to do a lot of practice with dumbbell bars, weightlifting bars, so I concealed it in my pants, went down, he was having something to eat and bashed him a few times on top of the Edwick bar. You see people fighting over bread. Yeah. You just gotta back your stuff. If you don't back your stuff, then that's it, you're screwed. Going to a lot of fights all growing up. And then when I went into prison, I had a lot of fights in prison. And that raised me from category C prisoner to a category A prisoner. I've been, I've, I've, I've done a lot of bad stuff that I'm not proud of. Yeah, um, yeah. He says, you think you're sick, you, don't you? Well, I says, you what, come again. And he said, do you not hear me? He said, well, go in TV room. I says, if you want to go in TV room, get yourself in TV room. So he walked in TV room. I walked in, I broke his jaw. Uh, to come running in and what have you, I got stabbed like 23 times and I thought to myself, I can't go down here today. So I put the best fight up I can. As you can see, I've tattooed through all the ones on my arms. This are all ripped at bone. They're like defensive mechanisms, blocking machetes. Or take, so I have a better take it in the arm or take it in the head. And so, so I take it in the arm and then just start seeing my bone ripped in half. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, it's just something I've always wanted to do, I've always dreamed. As soon as I put my first pair of boxing gloves on, I've always said I want to be the best I can be. I thought, you know what, look at him, I thought, yeah, I can do him. Why not? Put the challenge out there. Decker sent me a video back. Brett May, challenge accepted, son. See you in August. I'm just going to take him into a war they've never been before. And I'm going to take him apart. If I'm going, if I'm fighting, I'm going for war. I've got all my boxing belts at the bottom of my feet. I've got my family behind me. My you put them there? Yeah, I couldn't remember. And I'm like thinking, wow, I must have had some crazy night out last night. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Brett, the machine May. He's only recently been on YouTube, but he's already got 4,000 subs in like a couple of weeks, which took me five years to get. <laughs> so he must have something going on. If you're not familiar with Brett, he's a live wire. And we're about to find out his life story. <laughs> so stay with us. And he's going to be, and he's going to be fighting Decker. So yep. he's going to be mega, <laughs> mega viral um, in a, in a, imminently. <laughs> <laughs> the Decker file. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you for coming on, Brett. Yeah. yeah, thank you, mate. Cheers for having me. Yeah, before we get to your life story then, um, how's this come about with Decker all of a sudden? Uh, basically, I've been getting noticed a lot now. I'm 21 and 0, all wins, all knockouts, BKB, unlicensed, and uh, everyone just keeps on saying you need to fight Decker, the governor title. So I've watched a few of Decker's fights and that, and I'm comfortable I can waste him, so let's get it on. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> so you were born in Doncaster. We'll understand. be getting back That's to the right. Decker situation. That's yeah. right, Doncaster, yeah. Yeah. So what was it like growing up around there? Uh, Doncaster, a rough place, full of poverty and that, crime. So got into bits and bobs of trouble growing up on the way, but apart from that, it's all right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What kind of trouble did you get in? Uh, I've, I've done prison time, yeah, uh, going to a lot of fights all growing up and then when I went into prison I had a lot of fights in prison and that raised me from category C prisoner to a category A prisoner. So how old was you when you went into prison? Uh, my first jail sentence, I ended up cocking for about 16 years old. That's quite young. Yeah, section 18. So let's slow it down a bit then because we want to like get more of an understanding of you as a kid. No. So growing up then, your mum and dad, were they together and how did they meet? Uh, no, my mum and dad weren't together basically. Growing up, uh, my mum and dad parted I think when I was about six years old. My dad had a drug problem, he was bad on the heroin and what have you. Uh, cut all his story short. Was no! Like, no! Oh, Make well, long as we possible. want long stories <laughs> long on this channel. Just same as anyone else really, just <laughs> growing up seeing crazy shit. Dad beating my mum up and that. Mm. And uh, all that carry on. They parted, turned me into a bit of a... Uh, crazy tearaway, do you know what I mean? How like, did that affect you then? At age six and younger, the domestic violence in the house? Oh, it, domestic, it, it, it affects you a lot, you know what I mean? You see a lot of violence growing up. I've seen a hell of a lot of violence growing up. But, but going back to you specifically, because we, yeah. we want to understand you, you're in the house, mum and dad are fighting, take yourself back to that age, what's going through your head? Just thinking, uh, stop punching my mum in it, you know what I mean? Obviously, start pulling him away, but 
the guy was a big uh, big unit like myself at the time, as you imagine. So I was just a little kid pushed to one side, like, you know what I mean? Were you in fear? Like, if you, like, were in the room, were you in fear? Did you have to go and hide out somewhere or anything like that? Nah, never was in fear. Like, I, I just wanted to make a move to make it stop. But yeah. obviously, within the carnage, you used to always get took away by police. And then they eventually parted for good. Did you have any siblings? Yeah, I've got a sibling, I've got a sister. Younger or older? Younger. Younger. So were you protective of her? Yeah, protective of my younger sister, yeah. yeah she was about seven years younger than me, so she would have been a baby at them times. So when they split then, was that a relief to you? Because the household was quiet? To be fair with you, I, didn't, I never wanted my parents to split like any young, yeah. young lad want. I always wanted them to be together and what have you, but the more you get older, the more you realise it's better for them to split. You yeah. can't stay in something toxic like that. No, so, you, so you've got the two threads. You've got like one thread is like, I love my dad, I don't want him to leave. But the other is, there's mayhem in the house and now the mayhem's going down. Yeah, yeah, that's basically how it is really, to be fair with you, yeah. So was it relatively calm after he left? Yeah, relatively calm. And then got into the situation, my mum used to meet uh, new partners and I was like the man of the house. I didn't want these people being there. And then one of them in particular used to think, oh, what's the word, think you like an hard man. And then he used to try and lay his hands on me, give me a few cracks and what have you. How old are you at this point of the story? I'm going to about 12 years old, 13 years old coming. Okay, you know so it was mean? relatively calm until then, was it? Yeah, so it was just one thing. I remember on stairs, he gave me a few good whacks and what have you. And I just said to myself, I'll get you back one day. And then I turned into a uh, young man, 17, and then flipped out, did him in. Wow. I got myself locked up, put away. So if you're convicted of that, then can oh. you describe how you did him in? Yeah, so... Uh, Long story short, a lot no, bigger. not short. Sure. <laughs> well, well, the story's long. It was a lot bigger than me and what have you. So uh, I was sizing him up. I was only a skinny lad at the time. I went upstairs and I used to do a lot of practice with dumbbell bars, weightlifting bars. So I concealed it in my pants. Went down. He was having something to eat and bashed him a few times on top of the Edwick bar and got into him. Did that knock him out? Did it? <laughs> I didn't knock him out. Nah, no, split his head open and picked a puffy up, rammed it in my head. We had a fight and it took me mum and me auntie to split us apart. But the damage already done, I'm, I've broken a bit of his facial recognition. Was that your oh. first serious offence? Yeah, it was my first serious offence. And how old did you say you was? Uh, 14, I think I was on that one. 14. Yeah. I yeah. mean, did you know how your mum felt you had <laughs> a fight with her partner? Oh, she uh, she was pretty much traumatised. Like, she can't believe it that her son and her partner were falling out like this. Yeah. But what can I say? It happened. So who rang the police? Uh, my mum and my auntie. Okay. Yeah. So they turned up? Yeah, police come up, arrested me, did me for GBH. So what was that like then? Did you go in a remand jail at first? Nah, because um, I was too young, obviously. It's secure channels and what have you, so it's not really like prison. And then, obviously, when you get to 16, you go to Weatherby and what have you. So what you said, you said secure channels? Yes. Yeah, what so does that mean? Like uh, um, secure units, so basically they're not classed as prisons. You just put through channels. Never heard of that. Yeah, yeah. So who are you in there with? Uh, young, just young tearaways. Right. Is it like dorms or cells? Yeah, just dorms, mate, yeah. So is that a bit of mayhem as well? Uh, f to be fair with you, it's pretty much, yeah, it can be anyway, yeah. It so was, be. was it like an army camp? No, not like an army camp, just like a jail for children, you know what I mean? It's so, crazy so, so times. Go, going in a jail for children on your first day, could you describe what the procedure is? So basically like a youth club, you know what I mean? You're just basically like in like one big youth club now, with it being 222, you'd probably have PlayStations and that, what have you. But then it were a little bit more strict. So basically, just as so much... No, no strip searches, handcuffs, any of that stuff, uniform. Yeah, you that. still get strip searches. You still got all that? Yeah, 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 you still can get all that, yeah. Yeah, all that, yeah. So you go in then, and then they assign you a, a, a living area in a dorm, is it? Yeah, so basically, you got your own private room type of thing. But you're in a dorm for loads of people, yeah. And did they give you your toiletries and stuff? Oh, yeah, you get all that. Don't get me wrong, you looked after you were a kid. Yeah. So what were the other lads like? Little shits. <laughs> As you can imagine. Did, did you yeah. know any of them already? Nah, nah. I didn't know any of them, no. Is it territorial then? What part of the country you're from? That kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you get a lot of that anyway in prison, especially when you're a young age. Yeah. It's more like when you get onto your YPs and your Borstals, young offenders, which I believe I did I did four, three or four years in Borstal. Uh, growing up, I did 18 to 21 straight throughout. But on the YOs, there's a lot of difference to the cons. Everyone thinks they've got a point to prove. Everyone wants to be the Jack the Lad. Mm -hmm. So you see people fighting over bread. Yeah. You, you just got to back your stuff. If you don't back your stuff, then that's it, you're screwed. So that first one then, what were the staff like? Uh, yeah, sound. Yeah. They were sound. Yeah, sound. Did you have any situations in there? 
Uh, nah, to be fair, that was just pretty smooth railing. That I want in there that one on that one. I'm how old were you there for? Six months. Six months. Yeah. Okay. So how old were you when you got out? Um, coming up to about seventeen. And what year was that? Oof, I'm talking now, so <laughs> I'm I'm coming up to thirty years old now. So yeah, a while ago. It's about fifteen, sixteen yeah, years 15, ago. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen years ago. So yeah. you get out. Does anyone meet you? Yeah, met my family and everything, and uh, my grandparents. My grandparents did a lot for me. I used to live at my grandparents, basically, uh, due to all my mum and dad's troubles. So, yeah, I just said I'll turn my life around, like everyone else. Good ask. Did your mum stick with that man? She did for a couple of years afterwards, uh, and I had another ruckus with him. And then after that, he ended up uh, going down the road of drugs himself and ended up ruining himself, and then my mother left him. What was the build-up to the ruckus? Uh, basically, I was in the kitchen with my mate. Uh, I'm a bit older now at the time. I think I was about 18, 19. And we just sat there playing cards in the kitchen. He's got pissed out of his head. He started slagging my sister off, calling my sister a slag and what have you. You know, when he was in drunk. So I said, look, mate, I said, I don't need to hear that. It's my sister. You know what I mean? I says, pat your mouth in. He didn't stop. I let a few go, broke his nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. But you think the cops didn't come out for that one? No, he didn't grass on that one, no. <laughs> no <he didn't. laughs> wow. <laughs> and that was the last running? That was the last running after that. Now it's it's been put to bed. What, so was, the, what was the next that. bit of bother you got in after that? Next bit of bother I got in after that would have been, I was at a barbecue um, with a lot of friends and there was a bit of girl I was seeing and just drunken amongst lads all popped off a big gang fight really. Big gang fight? Mm. How did that start? Uh, just basically pissed up lads wanting to prove the sense. We're only young lads and uh, one of them's come at me fighting on the back. We fell through like a log burner fire. And there's like a pair of garden shears. Garden shear got split in half, and kid ended up losing half his eye. Ooh. You know what I mean? So I know, yeah. I've been, I've, I've, I've done a lot of bad stuff. What I'm not proud of. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean. But you've come out the other side of it. You know what I mean? yeah, exactly. That's why I, I'm never getting into trouble again. Just keep my head down now. So you got arrested for that one. So was it? How I did, did they I did jail for that? Yeah. How did they apprehend you? Uh, so basically, I took off away from the scene. Got to my current new partner's house at the time. I was chilled there for about three or four weeks on the run while they were raiding all over for me. And then I handed myself in. Handed yourself in? Yeah, I handed myself in and then uh, they kept me. got five years for it. What property did you turn yourself in? Because uh, they were raiding my family's houses every two minutes, you know what I mean? My grandparents' houses. And they just kept on saying to my grandparents, we'll keep raiding you till he comes. So gave me that ultimatum. I'm not going to let no one keep raiding my grandparents. It's not right. No. So I handed myself in like... Yeah. But I was a different guy back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a man now, you know what I mean? So first day in what institution is this, this time? I went to Deerbolt, not too far from up here, North East, Barnard Castle. And what's that like going in? Uh, yeah, they had that run out like a military camp. <laughs> County Durham area, yeah, they're all like ex-army officers and what have you. Did you find that intimidating? Nah, to be fair with you, I'm, I've never ever found, found jail more like, how can I put it, you know, just before you go into a fight. Yeah. You, know, you get, you feel you, your butterflies. Yeah. You sometimes you feel that obviously, otherwise you're not going to be human. But when you're in there, you just crack on with. It. So where did they assign you to live in that one? Uh, what in Deerbot? Yeah. I was on F wing on there. F wing. A wing. Yeah. Is I that was, a cell then? Yeah. I tell you, who's in there with me now is another good fighter. Remember Michael Ferry? Michael yes. Ferry. Yeah. He he was training with me in there. He were, me and him both used to train together in there. Like, you know what I mean, it were a bit of experience. As teenagers. Yeah, as teenagers, <laughs> as young lads, 18, 19. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what was your sentence on that one? Uh, five years ago on that five one. Five years. And yeah. you, got, you got your own cell right away? Yeah, I got my own cell, single cell, yeah. Wow. And what were your neighbours like? Yeah, uh, yeah, sound, yeah. It were all right. Yeah, they were all right, Jordy kids, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know anyone in this place from the, your last place? What, the deer bought? Yeah. Nah, I didn't know anyone. Uh, it's a long way away from me. South Yorkshire to go up to North East, a bit of a drive. <laughs> so did anyone heart check you? What's that? Or test you? What for? Oh yeah, you always get tested in jail. Can you describe that? Yeah, so uh, when I was in there, my first fight in Deerbolt, uh, kid, kid from Leeds it was, I think he said. I beat him on a game of pool. And just, it, it, it's daft as it sounds, it's just kid talk. He says, you think you're sick, you, don't you? Well, I says, you what, come again. And he said, do you not hear me? He said, well, go in TV room. I says, if you want to go in TV room, get yourself in TV room. So he walked in TV room. I walked in, I broke his jaw. What? Uh, snapped his jaw, yeah. <laughs> and what happened? What was the repercussions of that one? I just got put down block, block on a good order and discipline. That's what it's called. How did they cop onto that? Because obviously the screws have ran in, bit of carnage, all young lads run up, crowd round, see the fight. Come and grip me, mufti squatted up, took me down the block, left me down there to rot for about eight weeks on good order. 
and the oh. day did not horrible like a police officer <laughs> yeah. that's the worst that's what's, the worst thing about you what down the segregation yeah basically nothing just your toilet and like a flat little blue mat laid on floor so how do you pass your days get your books train press ups sit ups that's all you can do or oh, if you're in there for over seven days you get a little wind up radio <laughs> <laughs> you gotta keep a little good signal here <laughs> trust me it's hell on earth but when you're in there you gotta do it aren't you so when you got out the block then you established your reputation. Did people not mess with you after that? It's like that in jail, yeah, sometimes. As long as you're not a bully. Yeah. If you're a bully with it and that, obviously, then sooner or later, someone's going to have your ticket and take you out. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So I was in the order. The kid put it on me. He offered me out. So I was kind of respected for that, yeah. So did you see any... I've only recently discovered what these are. Juggins. Juggins. Yeah, no. jugs. Juggins. When you get jugged. Oh, yeah, knives, yeah. No, no, with the kettle. Oh, with the oh sugar, and then you're water. about getting watered. Yeah. Is that yeah, what it's yeah, called? Yeah. Do you call it juggins? Well, that's what, that's what it says. Yeah, yeah, down south. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. jugged. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you call it for you? Yeah? Uh, getting watered. Getting watered. Yeah, getting swilled. Swilled. <laughs> that's <laughs> what they call it, yeah. North so south, if you hear someone shouting through device. the window, yo, my man's getting swilled in the morning, you know, someone's going down. So you got everyone opening doors in the morning with a backstop wall thinking, who, who, who's going to get it Who's getting swilled? Just like when a pool ball goes missing. You could be playing Soch. And all of a sudden, you'll hear one of the screws shout, hold on a minute, there's a pool ball missing, everyone steps back. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> kids going in sock. So did you see any swirls? Oh, yeah, I've seen those swirls, yeah. I've seen kids' faces melted on the laps. Oh. Yeah, so it's, I've, seen, I've seen some crazy stuff, yeah. What, what was, was that? that? <laughs> I've seen a kid where, uh, when I was up in Armley in Leeds jail, basically, I don't know what the ruckus were about with him, filled it up and he chucked like a full bag of sugar in and a full bag of, um, a full squirty jam. And the jam obviously sticks to you. And the sugar rips you apart. I've never heard about the jam. Version. Yeah, squeeze the jam with it as well, yeah. Oh. It sticks to the extra. Wow. I mean, you can't get it off. So by the time the nurses and all that run, it's trying to cool you down with these flannels, it's just ripping your skin to the bone. You think know, your face is melted. Do you know what that was over? Nah, I've seen it happen a few times though. It's usually kids what can't fight, but you don't have to be hard to be dangerous, do you? No. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's one of them. I've seen kids get the throats cut, come straight up back, like, you see my scars through my neck. What was that from? Oh, that was a fight in a shop. I got a butcher's knife through throat. Mm. And threw that one there. Wow. And was there a vendetta? Yeah, it was, uh, it's in my, it was in my local area. It was like a murder attack on me. Oh, yeah, I've read there's an attempt on your life. Attempt on my life, yeah. Yeah. So uh, to come running in and what have you, I got stabbed like 23 times and I thought to myself, I can't go down here today. So I put the best fight up I can. As you can see, I've tattooed through all the ones on my arms. They're all ripped at bone. They're like defensive mechanisms, blocking machetes. Taking them, my back's worse. Like you were blocking machetes. Yeah, you go take. It's like I better take it in the arm or take it in the head. And so, so I take it in the arm and then just start seeing my bone ripped in half. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah. And then, then uh, that's where well, we got to the best bit. And I'm rolling around with them, and I heard one of them say, "Look, that Stanley art," and I could just feel this Stanley knife going from back of my neck to, oh, my. to my ass, from shoulder to shoulder. If you put my name in Google, it's all there. It shows up pictures. And just ripping open, ripping open. And I'm just holding onto one of their hands, biting on their hands, because he's got another knife trying to jag it in my face, because try ripping my face off. You know what I mean? But obviously, I cut it through the throat, straight through the jugular. So have you got like a crisscross on your back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, can, I can show you my, my back. My back's destroyed. Like you got Zorro, and then you got it's well, like the real Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get, get a picture of his back at the end to put yeah. on the thumbnail. Yeah, I can yeah. show you that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah so what was that over? Basically, it was uh, to do with travels and that up my way, and. Uh, Obviously, reputations and a bit of street politics, to be fair with you. It was a different world then and uh, we got into a big fight. So talk us through the day it happened. Yeah, it was. Should we get to that yeah. as we get to it? Because we're in his second prison now, aren't we? Let's go back to prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to jail. Stay tuned for why that happened. <laughs> right, we're in your second one now. Yeah. And you've established your reputation. Yeah. No one's messing with you. So what's your routine like in there? Basically, I'd get up in the morning, do my burpees, do my training, get me exercise. I used to go out, I want to exercise, I used to have a good few lads with me what to train. We'd do some circuits together. And we just used to concentrate on getting as big and as fit as we could. That's all you can do in jail. Look forward to your visits. And uh, yeah, that was it really. What dramas did you see? Oh, I've seen every drama you can imagine. In that in that institution, any any that stand out? Uh, in Dearborn, there was a kid called uh, CJ, a kid from Sheffield, mixed race fella. And uh, another kid, um, if he's watching this, Billy Kirby from Leeds. They were both in the same jail as me, uh, same wing as me, sorry, in Dearborn. I seen him have a fight in the gym. Uh, I seen like the Billy fella getting better, the, she the Sheffield kid. 
And anyway, seeing a Sheffield kid pull a, pull a blade out, Shanka, as his back were turned, he just come from behind, zzzz, and ripped his throat straight out, just in his gargling the blood, what just landed oh. near me. Yeah, but as you're all 18, 19 year old lads, you're like, hold on a minute, you get me? Everyone stood back, and the kid's proper trying to murder him with it. I think the kid ended up getting another extra 10 years for doing it or something. Did he? Yeah. The one survived then? Survived, yeah. Survived, wow. you're lucky to survive. Did they respond to that fast? Yeah, they're on it, mate. That's one thing about that jail up here in North East, they're on the job. Were people visiting you? Yeah, yeah. We found, yeah, we're getting plenty of visits, yeah. That's what gets you by, to be fair, the visits. Yeah, Is it your, your mum, your grandparents? Yeah. The usual. Mum, grandparents, family, yeah, girlfriend at the time, yeah. You gave me through, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, how long did you say this one was? I did five years in that one. All right, so you did five years then, so... Do oh, half. So you, so you did two and a half. Yeah. Oh, half two yeah. and a half. So two five, and a half do years. half. So as you're getting closer to the gate, do you have a plan for your life? Yeah, I just thought to myself, right then, Get out, get a good job, and start getting cracking and then start following this boxing route, start taking life serious. So and that's what I did. Started getting a few fights under my belt, going sound, and then, yeah. So you walked straight into a boxing club when you got out? Basically. I had a, I had a couple of weeks partying first, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. What, what, what gave you that focus on something positive at such a young age? It's just, it's just something I've always wanted to do. I've always dreamed. As soon as I put my first pair of boxing gloves on, I've always said I want to be the best I can be. Take any chances, see how high I get. That's all you can do. Reach for the stars, and if you miss, you grab an handful of clouds. That's, That's how I used to think it? of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you got stuck into the boxing. Everything's quiet for a while. Yeah. So if it's quiet for a while and what have you, yeah, just living life, going out, and then I, I met um, a girl I was with for quite a while. Things started going toxic with that started it in the bottle a bit mm. and then before you know it I'm back down the other channels again so I'm my own worst enemy at times to be fair with you so you did a third incarceration third incarceration and yeah. what was that for oh can't remember it's a long time ago I've done 24 incarcerations <laughs> <laughs> it's a how long, long was that ago. one uh, I think the third one was let me think what the third one was I'm sure the third one was I was, I was scrapping with some bodybuilder in town I think I got about 10 months that 10 months Is it the same, did they send you back to the same place I went to Marshgate on this one. I was uh, over 18 then. So I've started going to my local jails, Marshgate and what have you, Doncatras. So what's that like? To be fair with you, it's probably the best jail in the country. So what's yeah. they call yeah, it? Yeah. Doncatras? Yeah, Doncatras. Like Alcatraz? <laughs> yeah, so that's, what I, that's how they call it, yeah. But uh, yeah, if you ask anyone what's been in prison system, Doncaster Jail's pretty laid back. Cells or dorms? Uh, cells. No cellmates? Yeah, you can have cellmate if you're not high risk, yeah. Did Do you have one? Nah, I'm high risk. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 constitutes high risk? Uh, basically, been convicted for violence a few times in prison, that type of thing. Right. So unless you're a crazy arsonist, what sets your cell on fire? Something like that. Have yeah. you heard of that? Going I've on? seen. I've seen a lot of kids try killing themselves, burning themselves there. Oh right. Yeah, I've seen it where he rushed out. Everyone's panicking. I've happened two doors down to me once. We've all come on up, fire team, start spraying this kid who had a lot of mental health problems. I think you're a bit of a schizophrenic. He shouldn't have even been in jail, should be in an hostel. And we're just hosing him down where he's trying killing him, son, it's all. We're crazy times. But if his cell goes up, yours does. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, get to that door now. <laughs> have you ever had anyone like push their furniture against the door and set fire to their cell? Because I've heard of that before. Yeah, I think that's what that kid did, yeah. Yeah, yeah so they struggled to get in. Yeah, struggled. So you got an emergency hatch on every cell, what they've got to have by law. They unclipped it, put the hole straight to the middle and blasted him to one side to the other. That's how they handle it. <laughs> That's how they handle it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first drama on this stretch? Uh, I can't remember, you know, it's a while back that. Yeah. Uh, Did anyone remember. test you when you went into that one? I can't remember, probably. Mm. Jail's always full of tests. Yeah. It wouldn't be jail if not. So was it 18 plus, yeah? Yeah, 18 plus now. So it's like young offenders, but you're young men. Okay. So things are a bit like... Still got a point to prove, but not as much as the juvies. So, yeah, it's starting to get chilled out. A bit more relaxed. A bit more relaxed, yeah. So People rather make money than go out fighting. That's what we're getting like. There's a lot of drugs in there. Yeah, there's a lot of drugs in every prison. Spice? Yeah, Spice has took over every jail there is. Have you seen someone on Spice? Oh, thousands. <laughs> thousands. I've heard it's have a really, really manic. Or oh, really, trust really... me, I've seen some crazy stuff. Yeah. Like what? Like? <laughs> I've, I've seen a kid kill himself on Spice. Sorry? I've seen a lad kill himself on Spice, yeah. How? How? Kid called Coops, same with him, cut his own throat. If anyone's watching this, Coops from Barnsley, everyone knows who I'm on about. 
Yeah, yeah killed himself, yeah. Hell? Yeah, we were horrible, they blocked the wing off, it were disgusting. Oh. And black carrot blood all over. Oh. Horrible. I mean, horrible. That was in HMP Marshgate. I'm sure you'll get a lot of comments on this because a lot of people knew about that. Was he hallucinating? I think so, yeah, you're panicking and that because it's one of them drugs what makes you shoot through and you'd be super paranoid. So a lot of people, when they'd have it in jail, they'd always have it, like have a shank on them because they'd be like scared of their own enemy. And before you know it, if you look at like a proper spice head, they've got cuts all over them, nowhere to self-harming to bring mm. them out of that um, hallucinogenic state. Mm. So it's, it's a bad drug, to be fair with that spice is, it's a no-go. Have you ever tried it? No, I never would. No. Uh, I know I'd shoot through on it. <laughs> Not my type of drug. No. <laughs> Did you ever feel the need to have a shank in jail? No, nah, never. Nah, I've never, never done that. What's the most creative sh shank you've seen? Creative shank? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen kids where they used to grind uh, metal bins that used to be put down. And after a while, you can turn it into like enough a sword and machete type. Yeah, they're pretty when they get out, yeah. Creative. <laughs> pretty creative, yeah. <laughs> so on, on this one, then your third stretch, 10 months, you did only half of that, did you? Yeah, mate, yeah. So when did you go then? Back to boxing? Yeah, same again. Back to boxing. Started going on all these, enjoying lads all these. I went out, I think I ended up in Thailand. That was an experience. You know what, I mean? what, what did you get up to there? Oh, mate, partying to death. <laughs> did you go to uh, Bangkok? No, I didn't go to Bangkok, no. No. Nah. Uh, I didn't go there. <laughs> where, where did you go? I uh, went to Patea. Oh. Yeah, I mean, up them ways it was sick, like. Got party Central. Party Central, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Started travelling to full moon parties and that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it was <laughs> holidays, boxing, and then. Yeah, so basically next... trying to get back into normal life, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. did you? Yeah, I did, yeah. I've, I've worked on power stations and that, and I got my 360 excavator tickets and started doing groundworks. And then uh, I got I come into a bit of a cash. I was in a road collision. The car went through the side of me and broke my arm, basically. Yeah, it snapped 180 degrees. They ended up giving me a big payout, uh, me and a few of us, uh, lads. So I invested my money and started investing in sunbed shops. Yeah. So I bought my own sunbed shop, started pouring it out, putting my family in there, and just kept expanding on. Okay. Yeah, so I've stuck it out ever since. And was that before or after the attempted murder? Uh, I bought some med shops before the murder, but before the attempted murder, yeah. And was there another incarceration after that, or was that it? No, I've uh, my last incarceration. I got out in August last year. Oh, August last year. We'll yeah. How long was that one? I got two years on that one. That was the last one. Yeah, two years. Right. I was finishing off a license recall, yeah. So is it IPP? Is it? No, no. So I just like basically. I did a two-year jail sentence, and then obviously I've got to come out with probation and what have you. And probation didn't want me out because they thought I was going to uh, do something to the witnesses. Even though it wasn't proven, they just remanded me for that there. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, I got out August last year. So which prison was that one? I ended up going Hull. Hull jail Hull. on that one, yeah. That's a, that's a good jail. Is it? Yeah. Good jail. <laughs> on the scale of one to ten. Oh, we're taking the mickey there, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, the old jail screws, there's something else in there. Are they? If anyone's watching this, they'll tell you the old jail screws are next level. Are they? How yeah. so? You don't have to be bothered about the prisoners in old jail. You just got to be bothered about the screws. Beatings. Oh, trust me. The worst of beatings. What did you see? I've had it with them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Over what? Over what? Over anything. What you're looking at. Just, as, as daft as it sounds, just like that. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Coming down here from Doncaster into our jail. Really? And before you know it, you're scrapping with about five or six of them. Yeah, I've had Holy it. Holy shit. I've had me in cuffs, cuffed me to the back, spray on my face. I was this grab your lad? Whack, whack. Put, you, put him down block. You got a big black eye like that. And then they'll let you back out once it's gone down. <laughs> 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 That's how they're working there, mate. And I'm exposing yeah. you. <laughs> it's simple as that. <laughs> Did you hear of them passing any packages in there? Nah, nah. No. Nah, nothing like that in old jail, no. No, just give you a good kicking. Oh, good kicking. That's all you're worth in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, should we go back to the attempted murder? Yeah. Yeah. I really want to hear yeah. what happened, you know. To build, the build up to it. Yeah, the build up. The build up. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are you doing that day? You uh, wake up. So basically, what, what I was doing then? No, go, go before that day to the build-up to it. Oh, what do you mean? So to say, like... Well, how, the, how the friction started with this community? So basically, I was all... I was pals with these people at first. I was all right and I was on good terms with them and what have you. Uh, we were involved in levels of crime. I won't speak on this camera, but we were, we were doing things and what have you. Bit of jealousy, bit of street politics and what have you. Um me known as an Andy lad, I already put it out there, if anyone's got a problem, we'll fight one-on-one -on -one or what have you. These people obviously thought, well, we're not going to fight you one-on-one, -on -one, but we'll shoot you and we'll stab you type of thing, do you know what I mean? You're a big lad, so 
that's that's the messages I was getting back. And uh, I end up going up to uh, a pub with my mate, and uh, one of the one of the lads' wives and that started saying, "Oh, so and so seen you." And I says, "Nah," I says, "I ain't seen him." Why? And he says, "Oh, he's looking for you." I says, "Oh, if he's looking for me, time to come on me. I'm not hiding nowhere." Before you know it, start pulling up motor after motor. What are you saying? And sent one of the work lads out. Obviously, a lot of travellers have workmen. And uh, one of the work lads come and approached me. Uh, I let a few shots go, but I was buying busted his nose, busted his mouth, and I said, there's your workman. And then before you know it, it must have set him crazy because I started pulling knives out everywhere. He started running at me. So, yeah, uh, I blocked the door on my left hand at first at the shop. They're trying to get in about six or seven of them. Obviously, it's a 24-hour shop where the Pakistanis whose shop it is. It's opening. I'm going punch for punch. Before you know it, I'm not realising I'm getting stabbed left, right and centre from the side, from the arm, from the back, back of my neck side of my heads and just whisking these Stanley knives like crazy at me at first so I'm just holding on for dear life rolling around fighting with them and they're just saying get to get to his face get to his face and then get to his neck rip his neck so uh, as you can imagine I'm hearing that I'm thinking I'm not going down today if I go down today uh, I'm dead and it was on the day England v Croatia in a World Cup so I have no doubt they would have been fueled with beer and cocoa or what have you so I thought there's no way I'm going down so I'm rolling around and I'm just feeling these like like little mini punches to the back, but they're not. They're stabbing me to the bone, and uh, it's ripping open. And I heard one of them shout, and I've got to his neck. And as you you can clearly see that, can't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. So obviously that one goes there from the middle of my chest, like a butcher's knife, ripped through my jugular. I've had to grab onto right my arm. Through your jugular. Yeah, straight through. How long you got to live when they get your jugular? It's not long. You is got it? to grab your neck, yeah. Like that. So luckily for me. The shop have got a panic alarm underneath, and you know, I've been armed blagged a few times. Yeah. So they've been pressing it like crazy. These Pakistanis, I, I was unaware of it, but I'm glad they did because it saved my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they were pressing it to death. Next minute, I'm rolling around, blood squirting out my fingers and what have you. And they've uh, got up, run, go, go, go. We've, we've, been stabbed, we've stabbed him to the neck. I, I'm jumping up and down, pissed up on vodka myself. Like, uh, I'm not going to lie. And I'm going, fucking come on, come on, blood gargling out my throat. Holy shit. Yeah, it was a crazy scene, mate. It's all on camera, yeah. Wow. So if you put my name in YouTube, it shows you the clips of me in the shop, yeah. I've got my top off. So we can put that clip in this video, can you we? You can put this clip in, yeah. Not a problem. Holy uh, shit, that's going to be insane. Yeah, you can put and it you on, didn't yeah. fear for your life? Oh, I feared for my life, yeah. Adrenaline was going. I got told, I remember watching, so the more you panic, you go into shock. And if you go shock, you're dead. So I said, keep calm. So I'm breathing, but I'm just, this moment, I'm covered head to toe in blood. And when you see the camera footage in a bit, you'll just see how much blood it is. Ceilings, walls, floors, everything. So you've got like, you're holding on here, are you? It's like, it goes in the motion, goes zzz, 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 and it's just squirting through my oh, fingers. Squirting through your fingers? Yeah, squirting through my fingers, yeah. Holy shit, right, man. Yeah, squirting through my fingers, it's and then. Fucking horror scene. But I didn't realise my back, I must have been stabbed about eight or nine times in the back, from the top of my neck to my ass. Sean's sure. Yeah. I'll show you anyway, end of here. Let's take a few snips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. So, um, so the, the authorities are on the way. Next minute, I just see a load of police and uh, uh, paramedics, fellas in ambulances running. You need to lay down, you need to lay down. I said, why, what's up? I said, the blood's pumping too fast from uh, around your body. You need to lay down and we can preserve you and we'll give you blood transfusions and put blood in you. So I laid down, put my feet up. They're going through all my wounds, giving me all this emergency foam, emergency stitching. It says, we're going to have to wait for air ambulance. And the air ambulance is landing on the street. Big helicopter on the middle of a rural street. Rushed me into air ambulance and emergency airlifted me to Sheffield Northern General. And I can remember saying to the paramedic in the back, yeah, I said, listen, I'm not going to die today, me. And he's like, nah, mate. He says, you're strong. He says, hold on. Give me a shot of adrenaline. <laughs> you know what I mean? To keep, me, to keep me going and what have you. And yeah, mate, I was flying. Next minute, I got to Sheffield Northern General. Like, mate, well done, lad. They said, we managed to seal up your artery on your neck. We managed to seal up all your main bits. You're going to live. But the worst thing is, we're going to have to start giving you this. I'm not lying to you, these needles were like that. Oh. Like that. They had to put through every single wound into my bone marrow because they said I've been stabbed that deeply, the blades have chipped away my bone. You know what I mean? Oh. So, and that's on everywhere, my neck, my back, my arms. And they says, we have to inject you with this because you can die of septicemia or you know, gangrene due to the infection of the blade. Oh so, yeah, so I'm there laid down like that and then all of a sudden... I'm just seeing these big needles <laughs> going straight into my bone marrow and they're ejecting it like, come on, mate, just hold it out, you got to do it. And I'm like, fuck it. And hell. you can feel it all. Oh, you feel everything then. Because you couldn't get you no anaesthetic because it could slow down your heart rate and all that. It were, it were pain at its best. <laughs> this is one of the craziest... <laughs> this, oh, this is one of the craziest stories we've ever heard on this podcast. Yeah, that's oh. real life. It's, you are so lucky to be alive. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
So Holy they, shit. <laughs> they put me 19 hours in theatre, put me back together, and then obviously I passed out, I've been asleep. And I've woke up and I've seen every press you can imagine at my feet. I've got Calendar, I've got Doncaster Free Press, I've got Sheffield Star. I've got all my boxing belts at the bottom of my feet. I've got my family behind me, my pals. Them there. Yeah, I couldn't remember. And I'm like thinking, wow, I must have had some crazy night out last night. Just <laughs> 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 I promise you. Oh, man. So how, were you, how long were you in for? I was in the hospital for about four or five days, to be fair. I signed myself out. They said, you can't sign yourself out. I said, so I said, I am. <laughs> signed myself out. I was covered in blood still. It was horrible. I ended up taking off to a little area called Buxton. Have you heard of it? Buxton? Yeah, Buxton. Just Buxton back. Water? Yeah, so yeah, Buxton <laughs> Bakewell. No one heard Chatsworth House. You don't know where that is now? No. Up in countryside. So I ended up booking myself up there in a break. Put me in an hotel, a rural countryside hotel, and I'm just <laughs> laid down watching TV, covered in blood still. Oh, no. I thought, I mean, I'm staying here in the hospital. Like. I mean, what did the hotel staff think? You went <laughs> through walking <laughs> in? I walked in and said, what happened to you? I said, I've been in a car crash, mate. So don't ask me too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> just jumped in bed. I mean, you could tell there was something up. They says, what, what happened here? I said, put my head through the windscreen, mate. Oh man! <laughs> Do you know what I mean, blagged them a little bit. I suppose they didn't call the police again. <laughs> nah, 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 I was no threat to anyone. I was covered in sewing bandages. <laughs> so, so after your healing, yeah. <laughs> any other instances? Did, did you nah. have a missus at that time? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did have a missus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how did she react to your near-death experience? Yeah, she was just like basically hysterical. You know what I mean, yeah, as you can imagine. So, just same as anything. Doctors have said it was a miracle I was alive. Yeah. And then as soon as I felt like I was half okay, I remember just getting back in my car and I thought, screw this, I've gone to the gym. Yeah. And I remember laying down on the bench press, trying to just do some minor 60 kilogram bench press, something like it. And the gym guy said, Brett, he says, are you all right to be in here? I said, why, what's up? He said, all your stitchings are ripped out on your arm. you got blood all over the gym for. I said, I'm still freshly stitched. I haven't took the stitches out yet. I'm thinking, <laughs> I need to get back training. And I need to get back boxing. I need to channel my mind something right. So now, ever since that's happened, I've been advocates for schools, put down the Knife Saver Life campaigns. Obviously, what better guy to ask? I had over a thousand stitches. Were you thinking of getting revenge on those guys or the police picked them off because they were on video? Uh, well, basically, when the CID come uh, to the hospital bed, and says, right, everything's perfect CCTV. Would you like to make a statement? But obviously, the world I was living in, I said, I'm not making no statement. You know what I mean, I, I don't, I've never made a statement in my life. I never would or I never will. Did the, just did, the cop, did the cops get them anyway because yeah, of the CCTV? Yeah, the cops got them anyway, like, you know what I mean? Because it was on camera, but that had nothing to do with me. Yeah. You can't run into, like, a shop or a shopping centre and start stabbing someone without a mask on. No. No gloves. Leave the weapons there at the scene and say, oh, what happened to us? Yeah. That had nothing to do with me. Yeah, we interviewed the homicide cop uh, two days ago and he was just saying about all these killers. They just go out with the phones yeah. in front of the CCTV cameras and expect not to get caught. That's what I mean. And it's just madness. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You can't what? get away with hope these days. No. In this century, <laughs> everywhere's camera, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got dash cams on every street. It's all changed now. All right, so they, you know, they're in, they've been arrested for this. Um, you're recovering. And you're trying to just have a positive focus. So what what year is this and how old are you at that point? Two eighteen. Like that. So this not, is just twenty eighteen. Yeah, twenty eighteen this happened, yeah. So not so long ago. So you're in your late twenties. Yeah, late twenties, yeah. Late twenties. And then you're thinking, I need to get a positive focus. Positive focus, yeah. yeah. I, I just put it down to whatever don't kill you makes you stronger. You know what I mean? And I thought, God's got a plan for me. Mm. <laughs> I guarantee. Did you analyse your own role in that? Because you, your criminality with those people that led to it and Yeah. And then did, you, did that make you think, right, there was steps to this and I don't need to go down those steps again? Yeah, it's like an eye opener, obviously. It was like, uh, how can I put it? It's like, uh, just like basically, yeah, you got to change your, your life for the better. So yeah. Otherwise, it's only going to end up one way. I'm going to end up doing 36 years for killing someone. I'm going to end up dead on the streets. So it's make or break time. Yeah. It's yeah. as simple as that. So you hit the training once you'd recovered. Yeah. And then what happened? Just get started recovering, hit the gym, perfect. I thought I'd test myself out with a fight and it happened to be an A bales, a bare knuckle one, <laughs> like what uh, our mate Decker used to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I got into that and I won fastest knockout there was, yeah? Did but you? Was, really? yeah. Three seconds. Who was that again? Three seconds. Three seconds. Three seconds. Yeah, yeah, three seconds. It's on, on my videos. Three. Can we put that one in as yeah, well? you can put it in, yeah. Sweet. Yeah, you can put it in. Three that seconds, that's fair <laughs> use, isn't it, James? Yeah, so as soon as basically, <laughs> three seconds. So, so as the referee went, go. So, ready to fight? You ready to fight? Fight. 
I just launched a full assault, caught the kids sweet, and that was it. I've watched some of your fights. You're quite heavy when you go in. I'm aggressive, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I find... don't give them time to settle. No. You know? Is that is that your technique? That's basically one of my trademarks, yeah. So any experienced boxer will tell you, no matter how good you are or anything, if you've got a man constantly in your face who's powerful and fast and he's not giving you a second to breathe, it's hard to fight off someone like that. So if I'm going against big six foot ten men, the big six foot nine men, I'm not going to give them a chance to settle and chance for them to build me because they've got so many advantages on me. You know what I mean? I'm just going to take them into a war they've never been before and I'm going to take them apart. Have you ever, like, misjudged that and been hit? Oh, yeah, had a side yeah. Swear, I, 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 And been yeah. knocked out? No, I've never been knocked out. I've never been dropped never. in sparring. No, never. Wow. You know what I mean? I, if I'm going, if I'm fighting, I'm going for war. I mean, definitely. You don't want to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> would you, James? <laughs> <laughs> wow. What was your second fight then? My second fight? Yeah. Uh, when I recovered for the second fight. Where was the second fight after that? Oh, Barnes and Metrodome. You know what I mean? That was a ring fight, this one. A bit of gloved. Yeah, so 10 ounce gloves. Experienced fella. Six foot seven, 20 odd stone. Same again. Got into it. Bang, bang, bang. Toe for toe. And he must have not worked on his fitness. I could start seeing him gas. Caught him with a few body shots and put him out. How long? Round one. Wow. Oh, so you're pretty nails. <laughs> steady, I'm steady. Steady. <laughs> so, third fight? <laughs> uh, third know? fight's just gone now. I fought last weekend in Skegness. Okay, how did that go? Yeah, all right. Same again. Knocked him out round one. What did he look like? He looked, he looked massive. What was he? They called him the giant, yeah. The giant? Yeah, yeah. Like, almost That's what I've seen the video. 6'10", is that yeah, the one? Yeah, 6'10", yeah. He was in you Royal Marines. Proper go in, just guns blazing. Just it guns blazing. Exactly. Technique out the window, I just took it to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's come to he fight him, I come war. Yeah, because he's bigger. The guy, had, the guy had twice my size. If you, if you stand and start outboxing someone twice that size, if he's got the same type of ability as you, he holds all the cards on him. He's naturally taller, he's naturally weighs more, he's bigger. It doesn't make sense to do that. I'm going to take him into a world he don't like. I'm going to beat him that way. <laughs> Simple as that. So should we go back to your recall? Yeah, your recall, yeah. Yeah. Talk us through it. Yeah, so uh, this time I'm a bit later on in life now. I'm starting to mature a little. Uh, I end up in old prison then finally went to Humber prison. That's their like, sentence jail. And yeah, it was all right. I started get, coming gym orderly or training twice a day. You know, like a different approach, a different set of lads. Everyone's done the time. Everyone just wants to get out to the families. And yeah, to be to be fair with you, it wasn't a bad jail sentence. It was all right. <laughs> Sounds like you've been quite lucky in the jail system compared to some stories we've heard. Yeah, I've, I've, been, you know, I've got it nice in jail. You know what I mean, I'm not bothered where I Is it because your attitude towards it? Uh, you got to think of it once you're in, you're in, aren't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? No matter how much you cry or sob about it, you're not going to get out. You either adapt or you let it break you. Mm. Simple as that. So what grounds did they recall you on? Uh, just basically police intel. Police have gone to my probation worker and says, we believe he's going to be a risk to his witnesses. Basically, this bloke stabbed my cousin Alex, gave him a nice old scar through his chest here. He used to be one of our pals of ours. And I said to him, I said, well, as soon as I see you, I said, it's on. So I seen him, pulled him up, and he thought he could do the same to me, whip blade that. So I jumped in a Jeep and I started ramming him. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. Why was he going to stab your cousin? Yeah, well, he, did, he already did stab my cousin, yeah. He did? Yeah, yeah. Why? Uh, they got into an argument on drink in their house. He pulled a knife and put it through his chest. Was it just a basic argument? It's one of the things. Just you know little, I mean? little shit just blows up into life-threatening shit, doesn't Most it? Most definitely. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I've seen lads, I've seen where lads have been killed, you know what I mean? And, and they're dying for nothing, you know what I mean? Basically nothing. And most of the times it's knives. The quick and easy and that's how it is. It's wrong. That's why now I'm campaigning, put down a knife, save a life. you got a problem, get in a boxing ring. It's simple as that. No one has to get hurt. No one has to die. I mean, what? Winner gets 36 years and loser ends up dead. It's no life, is it? 100%. No, it's right, though, isn't it? It's, mm. it's a tragic waste, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Especially for the young people. Yeah, but when you're a young age, you don't see it like that. You think you're like a gangster. You think you're a somebody. You know what I mean? Until you turn into a man. I used to be like that. And then I just think, look back and I think, you need to help them. You need to educate them. Otherwise, if not, someone else is going to be dead on the street. So what age did you switch and become mature? So I think I think when I started getting into my mid-20s towards late-20s and I started chilling out a bit. You know what I mean? Started having serious relationships and what have you and I started thinking, who are these little pricks? <laughs> <laughs> you, you do that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, that's what you do. Hmm. And you just think, I used to be like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you so got what, mature. So when you look back on your entire life, I'm going to ex exclude where you almost got murdered, what would you say was the lowest point and the highest point? 
lowest point and the highest point? Well, that's a good question, that, to be fair with you. I'd say, obviously, the lowest point is when I was in segregation uh, for a long time in prison. And that was hard. And the screws didn't like you and they weren't letting you send your mail out. They weren't letting you have your phone call. And you just basically sat in a police cell for 12 weeks. And trust me when I tell you, it sends you crazy. I was I was pretty crazy, sat in, a, sat in a room for 24 hours every day. And all you can look at is your toilet. You can't even look out at window because it's all done out, you know what I mean? It cracks you up, I'll be honest with you, it does. You know what I mean? And when you and when they let you out of there, you think, I'm not going back in there. <laughs> I'm <laughs> telling you, it, it works, it works. What landed you in there on that occasion? Just uh, same, fighting, scrapping. I was scrapping always. The more you get a bigger name in jail, the more you're always going to get someone to test you. Mm. You've got every hard case in the country, living with one of them. Everyone wants to be the man, don't they? Mm. Simple as that. So what would you say the high point is then? Pardon? The high point of the The high life. point yeah. is uh, obviously... What, before the attack? Whatever. Just your entire life, looking back from now, this moment, what was your highest point? I say, I say probably now, getting my fight at Wembley. I think that's I think that's one of my best achievements now, telling me I'm going to fight at Wembley in July. I'm, I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? So what kind of an audience will that be? How many? Oh, thousands and thousands. thousands. It's BKFC, so biggest bare-knuckle boxing firm in the world from America. They're coming to the UK for the first time and Wembley's been granted for it, like... Wow. So there's uh, me and Danny Christie what's on card. So yeah, it'd be a good do. What, you versus Danny Christie? No, nah, he's I think he's light light heavyweight, Danny. I'm a bit heavier than him. I see. Yeah, so So who are you but fighting? We'll be representing, I'm fighting this guy, I can't pronounce his second name. A uh, big Polish fellow though. Hmm. Is it is Not it a six foot ten one? No, no, <laughs> about six foot four, six five years, but very experienced. You gonna knock about in a minute, three seconds? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't want to say on camera in case show me set up, but I'll give it <laughs> my very best and I'll get stuck straight into him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well what's the biggest audience you've fought in front of prior to that? Uh say probably capacity of about fifteen thousand or something. Fifteen thousand. Yeah, about 15. How does that feel walking into a ring with fifteen thousand people feels watching? Good. Yeah, feels good, mate. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I like it. Are they cheering <laughs> or heckling you? Pardon? Cheering or heckling? Well, he wins, yeah, doesn't I'm he? A bit of both. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah do heckling. you like it though? Yeah, I enjoy it. Good heckle. I, I like it. I like a good heckle. Yeah. <laughs> did, they, did they go mad when you went real fast like Mike Tyson? Yeah, they all jump <laughs> up. I love it. Get sorted, get a shower, and then go out on the piss. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I love it. You know what I mean? That's what life's yeah. about. Do you have to have no sex before a fight? Uh, yeah, well, but obviously. I knew you would ask that next. You just can't stick to them rules, though, can we? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There are some rules that need to be broken. That's one of them. <laughs> so, I mean, how long have you been out of uh, your last prison sentence for then? August. August, yeah. right. So, sorry, I just worked that out because I'm a little bit tired today. So, nine months. Yeah, nine months, yeah. What have you done in those nine months? I've had uh, four boxing fights, won all four, um, just maintaining my businesses, my legit, legitimate business. Are they still some bed shops? Yeah, still some bed shops. I mean, you're putting my time to shame. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're uh, just cracking on with them, keeping fit and healthy with Jim, mm -hmm. and uh, that's it really, yeah. And those fights, were they all bam, 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 bam? Uh, yeah, but they got stuck straight back into me, a couple of them, and that gave me a good few cracks back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can't take a risk when you're fighting people that size. You know what I mean? It does hurt. You know what I mean? Mm. But I just push past it. Were the moments you fought the tide was turning against you? Pardon? Was there, a, was there a moment in any of those fights where you fought it was going the other against you? Uh, I've been, well, on one of them, a uh, kid grabbed me and we started rolling around on the floor. He took, tried taking me into a bit of a wrestling match. Oh, shit. So I got quick and I thought, he's taking it pretty personal, this kid here. So I just kept calm and relaxed. He come back at me again, slipped him, bang, body shot over the top and put him away, yeah? Yeah. So how do you prepare for a fight? Uh, same as everyone else, you've got to train hard. I believe fights are won before the ring. Whoever wants it most, really, trains harder. Well, you should have he heard what Paul Venice said he does. Absolutely sod all. Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't believe that. He eats in Palmos. Palmos, yeah. Palmos, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just eats shit and gets shit and gets in the ring. I wish I could have that. If I eat shit, I'll blow up like a balloon. <laughs> yeah. So you say you have a healthy diet, you do a lot of exercise, you get in the ring. Yeah. And that's the that's secret it. to that's success. Prepare, yeah. But does it change, yeah. like, in the months before? Do you have to do certain exercises and certain food and then it's... It, it, yeah, so basically you want to get your hard sparring out of the way and then prior before you fight, you don't want to be sparring, like, a good 10 days before. You don't want no injuries, do you? So you want to do as cardio as much as you can, but when it's your last week, you don't want to be doing no cardio, no strength work, because you've already done the business then, haven't you? Everything should be in the bank. It should just be loosening off. Get your mind right, listen to a bit of music, relax, get in the right frame of mind and get the job done. What about your diet? Uh, my diet, yeah, you've got, you've got to do diet. What like? So chicken, I like chicken. Oh, protein, protein. Yeah, protein diet, yeah. Tuna, 
don't get me wrong, when it's on a Sunday, I like to eat what I want, like everyone else. So I <laughs> cheat stock day. Up. Cheat day. I go crazy for cheat day. <laughs> what music pumps you up? Full moon Thai party music. Full moon Thai party. <laughs> yeah, that Is kind that of pumps you up. <laughs> My sister went out though. Yeah, she loved those parties in Thailand. Did she? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, awesome, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Best place on earth there, mate. Yeah. Is awesome. that what you like though, the dance music? Yeah, I like the dance music. And I go away on weekend, I go Greece on weekend. Like, yeah. can't wait for that. What, this weekend? A, yeah, this weekend. Oh, that'd yeah. be wicked. Can't wait. Go to we Rhodes. don't need a fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. You know what I mean? So, go travel out to Falaraki and that. Might have a few beers up there. Who knows? I'll <laughs> we'll take it from there. <laughs> Are there any stories you've not told us you think you might have left out? Uh, no, you've pretty much covered everything. Covered everything. There's always a little bit of stories, but we can always right. get to them, can't we? Well, there we go. Maybe do you talk about your YouTube Yeah, then, why, on YouTube. when did you start the YouTube channel? I've only been on YouTube a couple of weeks. Yeah, so... Why? Basically, everyone says, why don't you put your fights on YouTube and that, because everyone knows how much fight. And I, I didn't used to like doing all, because you give away too many secrets, you see. So I used to just leave everything off the YouTube crap. But I thought, you know, they've got a point now. So I put everything on YouTube, and then everyone says, you need to fight Decker. And I said, who's Decker? I didn't even know who Decker was. So I started looking him up, and I thought, you know, I thought, he's a good fighter. You know what I mean? Can't take it away from me. I thought, you know what? Look at him. I thought, yeah, I can do him. Why not? Put the challenge out there. Decker sent me a video back. Brett May challenge acceptance, son. See you in August. Really? From Decker, yeah, from Decker Eggy. And I thought, this guy's got a bit of character to him. I thought, I'll enjoy this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys been communicating? Oh, we've been communicating, yeah. And is that online or private? It's online on YouTube. We started off on OK terms and then not so OK terms. Now the beef's rising. Yeah, but it's kind of mellowed now. We're both on a level. So a lot of people following that online. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Thou hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for that. Because Decker's Danny Christie fight, I think millions of people watched that and it wasn't expected, was it? Right, it was a good fight. That. Venice says he went up there and then like the same day, by the time he's getting home, we had 4,000 friend requests on Instagram. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Are so you ready it. for that blow up? I'm ready for that blow up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Decker, isn't it? He holds all the cards. He he does, he? Do you know I mean? He's like launching people into launches. international fame. He has his own uh, personal troll club. Anything you say on him, that's it. He's on you. <laughs> <laughs> It's Mr. YouTube, isn't he? Mr. Time YouTube. to take out Mr. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> have you been trolled yet? Oh, I've been trolled. Of course I have, yeah. Yeah, how are you finding it? Yeah, it's part of the parcel, isn't it? It's brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you got to take it on. <laughs> I love the trolls. You're not it. successful enough unless you've been trolled, That's it, right? isn't it? You need a few haters on the way. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Just say. 100%. Add, add to the views and the engagement. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. So if people want to reach out to you, follow you and support you, where can they find you? We'll put all your links below the video. Yes, I'm, mate. Yeah, Brett Machine, mate. Uh, that's my channel and what have you. Facebook, we've got all that. I ain't got my Instagram account on at the minute, but yeah, sounds a pound. Right, so if you've enjoyed this, please let us know in the comments and all the links are going to be in the description box below the video. It's been a shorter one than we usually do, but an absolute explosive one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone really fast. Thanks, it's gone really fast for me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Give us a hug. Yeah, sweet. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Respect, Woo! my mate. Yeah. Respect, Woo! my mate. Woo! Gadfly Press is proud to announce the publication of Big Joe Egan, the toughest white man on the planet. And that statement came from none other than Mike Tyson, who wrote the introduction to the book. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description box below the video. It's got almost five stars on Amazon, and it is mind-blowing stories of Joe's rise in boxing. You've got the crime story of what went down at the pub, the war at the pub, Joe's incarceration, and how the toughest white man on the planet could not be held down, how he rebuilt his life. He's gone from strength to strength, and what he's, you know, you can see right now what he's doing all over the world. So links will be in the description box below the video. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see the full podcast, it's on our channel now. In which he talks about Michael Francis, Tyson, and loads of big names that he's worked with. Fascinating stories. Check it out. So the book, Big Joe Egan, Toughest White Man on the Planet, is available in all three formats, audio, ebook, and paperback, worldwide on Amazon, link in the description box. Here at Boomer and Jen, we offer a wide range of organic or recycled clothing. We all know our planet is important. We only have this one. So it's vital that we all work together to slow down and reverse the changes to the environment. 
whilst we all know that big industry are having a significant effect on pollution. Here at Boomer and Jen, we believe that if we all make small changes, we can do our part. Fast fashion causes detrimental effects to the planet. Not only is nearly 20% of global wastewater produced by the fast fashion industry, but there is a considerable amount of fast fashion ending up in landfill. So let's move away from fast fashion items that are only worn once or twice and start wearing extremely comfortable, durable and environmentally friendly clothing and ethical jewellery. Boomer and Jen was founded in a quiet town in Devon in 2018. It has now gone from strength to strength as the world is becoming more aware of the current climate situation, helping our customers to buy sustainable, quality clothing. All of our products are fair trade and registered with the Global Organic Textiles Standard Association. Check us out on organiccottonclothing.co.uk